do a couple of things. So, um, as I have done for page rank, I also added a little code for computing its scores. So, hub and authority values, which is absolutely equivalent to, to the other code. You define a matrix and then you maintain two vectors called hub and authority. And just work a loop so that uh, you determine the hub value given the authority and the authority value the given the, the hub. Uh, just to experiment with uh, at least small matrices. Uh, next. Uh, I also, uh, here is uh, a um, folder, but before you download it, because it, it's rather large, so probably it will exceed uh, some disk quotas. And wait, okay, it's here. Uh, folder well, let me show it graphically so you can see better uh, here you have uh, a Python code okay this code uh, will, uh, as I told you last time, will did the Open Congress uh, website, and uh, I added everything that is needed to uh, download not only the uh, uh, The idea was to start from this page, um, connect, uh, download uh, the representative pages that are listed in the home page, and then uh, have a look at the list of uh, at the list of sponsored and co-sponsored fields in order to build a network between representatives. Um, this network is computed by this Python code. So, essentially, I compute, we can compute many things by looking at those pages. The first one is given two representatives connect A to B if there is uh, some field that is sponsored by B and co-sponsored by A. Okay. If the bill has been proposed by B and A endorses it this is a form of endorsement uh, from A to B. So this is one uh, possible analysis. And by this analysis we get a direct graph that hopefully connects uh, most uh, uh, representatives, if not all. The second uh, uh, thing that we can do, and that will be useful um, in the future, uh, is this. Oh, by the way, this directed uh, uh, arc can also have a number that counts the number of bills that are sponsored by B and co-sponsored by A, of course. So each of these connections has actually a weight. The second thing that we can build is and 
an undirected graph. So a graph where connections don't have any uh, direction, and where every connection uh, just says how many bills have been signed by both representatives. So if this connection is 10, it means that uh, there are 10 bills where both A and B appear as either sponsor or co-sponsor. Of course, two representatives that are politically very close will have many bills in common. So we can expect a very high number here. On the other hand, of course, uh, if they are very far away, politically speaking, then we can expect either no connection or <coughs> a connection related to a few, um, how to say, wide bills that apply to a very wide uh, political area. So the idea is that is to mine that website looking for these two kinds of information. They are both related to proximity, but one is directed and can be used to compute, to directly compute, for example, PageRank or its scores. The other, this one, is undirected, and uh, we will use it. Uh, when speaking of uh, clustering, in order to uh, try to find uh, groups of people that are close together. Of course, this is just an example. Uh, there are many kinds of data that are available for this kind of analysis. Uh, let's give just a uh, rapid look to the code. trying to find a, a way to enlarge the characters. Anyway, you should see it as it is. Um, so the idea is that, uh, um, okay, let me skip the initial part. Uh, okay, so First thing, uh, we download this uh, uh, this web page where base URL is uh, www.autocorrest.org. Um, anyway, every time we want to download something, we first check if uh, it hasn't already been cached. So everything I download, I also put the copy in the local file, so that, because uh, of course we are going to download uh, data uh, concerning more than 500, uh, 400 people and uh, thousands of bills, so of course uh, it takes uh, quite a long time. So if we have everything cached, it's better because we can rerun the program, do different analysis and so on. Uh, I'm using URL lib to download files uh, given the URL. Um, 
So this is the page page containing all the names of the representatives. We scan that file looking for some specific lines uh, that give us the uh, name and other data. We can see them here. So, I'm looking for uh, uh, divisions like this, where we have a reference to one person, the name, some data about him, and uh, uh, his political party. So, I just began looking for those lines and, connect and uh, putting them together on a an array, and what I'm doing here is, okay, I create this uh, dictionary where uh, for every every representative has a code and uh, is associated to a list of properties. Among these properties, there are two um, arrays that will contain the uh, bills that have been sponsored by him and the bills that have been co-sponsored by him which are found uh, looking in fact at this page so we collect uh, the basically the ID of uh, bills that have been sponsored and followed by the IDs of bills that have been co-sponsored. Um, they can be divided into more than one page. So, for example, here if you want to look at all the sponsored bills. So you have to collect uh, a few pages to do that. Next, here for every uh, representative we have a list of sponsored and sponsored bills. Then we have to uh, compute the adjacency matrix, as I said, told you before. So with the link uh, for every bill that has been sponsored by one and co-sponsored by the other. So. I build this matrix references and to use it for page rank computation you know I need to okay transpose the matrix well actually first uh, you see it must be uh, divided by the row sum Every row must be divided by the row sum. Some rows are zero, so 33 with no effect to that. We transpose it somehow, and okay, this is uh, okay. This is the code for computing page rank. Which is exactly as the code uh, in uh, R. So this is in Python, but it's exactly the same. Um, 
So I just do a row by column computation of the um, matrix and the vector. Actually, I'm maintaining two p vectors, okay? The first and the second, so that I alternate between the two in order not to destroy the first when I compute the second. So at every step, I take my input from uh, the first one and put my output on the second or vice versa. Same for the hits scores. So, also in this case, I maintain two different uh, uh, versions of the vectors H and A. Um, Okay, so once I have done this, I have vectors that represent the page rank score, its the hub score, and authority score of every uh, representative. Next, um, <coughs> the second uh, uh, thing that I wanted to do was uh, find also this undirected graph. So, uh, okay, actually, what I do is for every pair of representatives, I compute the intersection of the list of bills that they have, and I, the size of the intersection is exactly the, the, the value of one. So finally, I output everything onto a, a CSV file. Uh, okay, but let's see the final output. Okay, so every representative uh, comes with uh, a name, his party, the number of sponsored bills, the number of co-sponsored bills, his page rank score, which uh, I think I have computed it on a 10 basis. Okay. I uh, multiply the, the, the final page rank score by 10, so page rank is actually the score from 0 to 10 have an authority value, the image file, if you want to display him, and then uh, actually we also, uh, I also wanted to display this information. Uh, actually, um, it turns out that almost all representatives are connected to each other because um, from time to time there are some very popular bills that are signed by everybody. <coughs> so uh, okay, it's a matter of filtering some of the uh, most popular bills. So, for example, I chose this uh, uh, I chose to insert the two thresholds in the program so that, okay, I decided to um, connect only representatives that have uh, 10 or more uh, Bills in common, <coughs> and uh, um, let's see. Okay, and I exclude all bills that have been signed by more than uh, ten percent of the uh, representatives. So in this case, I wanted to only consider, let's say. 
local interactions on uh, bills that are not too uh, that are not signed by too many people. So at the end, let's see. Um, I only list connections, like in this case, to representatives if they satisfy those two criteria. And rather than uh, writing the whole number, For some reasons that we will see later, I was interested in uh, uh, putting here, you see, this number, meaning the number of bills in common, is a sort of similarity measure. The larger this number, the more similar are the two representatives, politically speaking. Actually, I wanted to uh, transform it into a measure of distance. Distance is somehow the opposite of similarity, right? So I want a large number if they should be far away, and a small number if their distance is small, meaning that their similarity is high. So if the distance is d, uh, it turns out that a reasonable, uh, no, if the Sorry. Their number of uh, common bills is S, then the square root of 1 divided by S turned out to be a reasonable distance uh, value. Okay, so that if S is very large, then D tends to 0, meaning that they are close. If S is small, well, it will never be larger than, smaller than 1, because I'm, I'm not considering connections if uh, uh, S is 0. Then the distance tends to 1. And so I collect this number. For example, uh, this means that uh, uh, this representative giving the other is connected to representative uh, number 7 in this list uh, and this distance is uh, 3.16 and so on. Uh, okay, so actually the, the formula that I used for distance is Um, let's say the two nodes are not connected, so we can consider distance infinite. If uh, the number of common bills uh, is less than uh, less than ten, or one divided s minus ten times ten, if uh, s is larger than that. Okay, so distances go are between zero and one. Okay. Now the problem is, uh, what can we do with this? Um, with this list? Well. Uh, let's see. Well, 
for example, I chose this uh, the comma separated values representation because it can be easily open with, uh, for example, with spreadsheet. So if you open uh, open office. Uh, you should be able to import this CSV. Of course, it requires you to specify a few uh, data, for example, in our case, uh, data are separated by commas. Text, uh, if necessary, is delimited by uh, double quotes. So if we import them correctly, we have this list. So with this list, uh, we can already start uh, uh, doing something, for example, um, <coughs> sorting people according to their page rank or uh, up an authority value, uh, or maybe more interesting, finding correlations between uh, the page rank, up and authority values. Um, And so on. So, um, my idea for today is uh, try to play either with this uh, script or with something that you create and um, Try to come out with a similar uh, collection of data. Uh, if we, if uh, you want to play with this script, uh, so uh, one about Congress, rather than copying, uh, rather than downloading the file in your directory, because it can be. Uh, can exceed your disk quota. Uh, okay, um, maybe you can just use uh, my cache. So you can find uh, all the files and they should be readable at this in this folder. So slash home slash mauro.polnato slash address The idea is that uh, you can copy the congress.py file in your directory and then Here, there are the names of two cache directories where the files are stored. Rather than uh, using these names, uh, you prefix them with my directory. Directly use my cache and no problems in the city quotas. Okay, I save this 
uh, everything should be uh, readable from other users. possible outcomes of this kind of uh, this kind of work. Here is an example, something that we can uh, that we will during the course. So the, the idea is that uh, obtaining the, the raw numbers is only part of the story. Next, uh, what you want to do usually is uh, to show those numbers in some uh, so that they, they can be actually understood by people. And uh, for example, one result of this uh, data mining operation could be something like this. Um, this graph below, for example, it shows the representative, every board of course is one representative, and uh, it uh, lays places representative so that the mutual distances, the distances between each other, are as close as possible to the distance that has been determined by this formula based on the number of fields that have been signed together. Here, okay, so um, of course uh, some pairs are not connected. In that case, uh, they are free to be at any distance. The problem is that we cannot enforce too many constraints on this system because uh, we will see that uh, in theory. Given a more or less arbitrary set of distances, it's impossible to find a layout that perfectly um, that, you know That, that gives exactly these distances between all pairs of nodes. Um, you have to allow for some uh, elasticity in the system. So the best you can do is uh, <coughs> an approximation of this that tries to keep close together people who have, uh, in fact, many fields in common and to keep far apart people who have very few. Um, here, you see, I chose to color the political, to color the nodes based on the political party. So Democrats are blue, or Republicans are red. And uh, actually, you see, in this case, that the uh, layout actually corresponds to their, uh, their political position. So there's nothing here that, that tells the system to put all Democrats on one side and all Republicans on the other. The disposition of these two groups are obtained just by looking at how many bills have been signed together. So you see, in this case, you have two clear clusters of nodes that roughly correspond to the political party. So if no one told you that uh, in America, in the US, there is uh, basically a, a two-party system. Just by looking at, uh, say, even if uh, we didn't color these nodes, you could already tell that, uh, okay, 
the American system is more or less bipolar, the, the first two, two parties. Actually, there is, this is not the, the complete story because if you look farther away, you will find a lot of people who are far away from all the others. Actually, these representatives are, okay, either people who are not active, so they don't participate in the parliamentary process, or they have different uh, uh, tasks. For example, they can be head of some important uh, subcommittee of the House. So they don't uh, participate to the parliamentary uh, discussions, but they participate to subcommittees and so on. Um, of course, uh, have downloading the uh, picture can also help you to see the faces of the single nodes. You can see here that there are some Democrats and Republicans that are more or less in the middle. I don't know if there are any famous names here, but I'm not very uh, I don't know much about American politics. Um, or you can do different exercises, for example, uh, you see here I put another uh, chart uh, that helps me filter out people. For example, I, d I can decide to filter out uh, people who don't have lots of sponsor leads. So these I chose to only represent people having 16 or more sponsor leads. These are more or less the core of the of the parliamentary debate. So they are the people who put out more law proposals. Or uh, uh, they don't always correspond to the people having the highest page rank. What does page rank mean in this context? It means that uh, these people having high page rank not only um, so the bills that they sponsor they are co-sponsored by many people and those people that co-sponsor <coughs> those bills also have uh, sponsored bills that are co-sponsored by high rank people okay so these are the people whose bills are sponsored by the high, the, by, mm, on the average, by people who have, uh, okay, I'm not very good at saying recursive sentences, so uh, try to understand, you have the formulas to, to understand this, okay. The same about uh, uh, hub and uh, authority values, of course. Um, one other interesting point. Uh, let's see. But, but maybe we can look at it from here, if I can. No. Okay, so.
You can also try to find correlations, for example. Uh, well, not so easy to see it here. But, uh, for example, uh, you have uh, different uh, measures for people in this case. You have the page rank, uh, uh, the hub, and authority scores. Is there any relationships with, between the, the three, or between each pair of them? So if I take all the representatives and I put, uh, for example, the page rank on the X and uh, the hub value on the Y axis, these are the blue rectangles. Is there any relationship between the two? Or are the two measures actually independent? They show different things. So suppose that, you see, uh, uh, when you look at the definition of page rank, uh, hub, uh, and authority, they all have the same uh, structure. So they are all uh, derived by adding values coming from uh, uh, incoming edges or so. So one doubt that I had when I first learned of these uh, kinds of measures is are they really independent or do they say exactly the same thing? Because of course they are defined in different ways. But uh, if you plot one against the other, what can you expect? For example, if uh, you know the page rank score and the hub score, where more or less, uh, if they uh, measure the same thing, then you can expect them to be roughly proportional. So actually the blue squares would align somehow in, the, uh, in this graph. I mean, if a high page rank corresponds to a hard to a high hub score, we would expect these uh, rectangles to be aligned. That there is a correspondence between the two measures, which actually does not happen. Okay, from this graph, you can understand that, more or less, hub values and page rank values are actually independent of each other. Sorry? Uh, no, uh, page rank is on the x axis. And then the y axis represents a hub uh, with the blue squ uh, square and authority with uh, the red. So just don't look at the red squares uh, for the moment. Just consider hub. This is a graph that uh, puts into correlation page rank, which is on the x axis, and hub. Okay. You see that there are people who have a very high page rank and a very low hub score. 
and vice versa. Of course, most people, let's say the ordinary people, have low scores, both in page rank and up. Few representatives get enough popularity to, to have a higher value. But actually, it's much easier to have a low page rank with a high half value than vice versa. Well, not really. Now, actually, this is a problem, probably a problem of scale. try to put in correlation the hub and the authority values. So let's just remove this. So if I plot half an authority values directly one against the other, of course uh, still with a scatter plot. I get this kind of distribution that tells me that just looking at the graph. So, of course, you can also um, use numbers, for example, correlation coefficients and so on. But from here, you see that there is a sort of relationship between uh, hub and authority values. They are not completely random with respect to each other. If someone has a high half value, his authority value will not be below this threshold, for example. But again, they are not so strongly correlated so that one score can replace the other. Also, in this case, uh, we can assume that they say different things. Of course, this is just by looking at the graph should be able to uh, <coughs> to use numbers to compute uh, to use numbers to, to, to support this intuition but this is something that we will see later in the course
play with this data. Uh, like for example, a comparison between Democrats and Republicans uh, based uh, maybe on the regional score. So, uh, or it is sort representatives according to page rank. Uh, is there one of the groups that comes out with respect to the other? What is the average value for the two groups? So they are all uh, simple statistics that can be computed directly with uh, a spreadsheet. 